Here we have the before. This is how it stands right now. By the end of the day, hopefully, it will be completely different. Take the handrail off, take the spindles out, raise the handrail, take the cap off and put in some metal decorative spindles. Let's see how it goes. Taking out the wooden spindles and now I have to house these within the base and the handrail. Uh, they're not going to be blocked in with timbers either side. So in order that I can find the hole each and every time. I've got them to do it 23 times. I've made myself a nice little jig. What I do with this, I've got it all lined up, so I'll get my lines, I'll get all my lines to marry up. So this line will marry up with that line. I'll use that to hold it in place, slide it over, and I can drill a hole. That will give me precise posi uh, position for each spindle as I go up. The spindles are going to alternate. Big, small, big, small, big, small, big, and so on and so forth. You'll see as I go along. How to do vertical hole in a diagonal piece of material. I had to think about that. Anyway, I ain't got time to mess around. I've made myself a little jig, a little template, <clears throat> pre-drilled with my hole. The template is cut to the angle of the steps. When I put it upside down, it is horizontal. I've marked all my lines where all the holes are gonna go. I have my auger bit in my pre-drilled hole. Now this, this section here would normally be clamped, but as this is for your purpose only, don't need to do it, it's already been done. Just showing you. This will be clamped to the, to the handrail, place it in. Drill away as many times as I need to. So it's all about the template. You get that right, your little jig, you're rolling. Thank you very much. Getting around problems. This is the base rail for the stairs. Problem is, the ceiling was in the way of me being able to cut into the base rail for my spindles. So what I did was, I cut it out completely. I brought it here into the garage. I'm cutting my holes now using my jig. Once I've done that, I can replace it. The only thing to make good is the saw cut. It's always a way. Here's one of the spindles. All the spindles have now been fitted. I'm sitting here on the top step of the landing of which I'm about to lay a new floor and finish my spindles. Now, what I don't like about these kind of jobs is when people put a new floor, existing nosing, and they just put an edge here, which means you have a step and a step. I don't like to see that. So what I'm gonna do, remove the existing nosing, replace with a blank piece of timber, which will finish flush to the string. which will finish flush to the string. Fit the new piece of floor. And then trim the existing nosing and fit it at the new height so it finishes flush with the new, with the new piece of floor. So that it will look like the original. I do that all the way around and across the step. And then all you do is you put a piece of scotia underneath, a decorative finish. Yeah, it looks exactly like it did originally, only now it has a brand new floor and no secondary step. This is a nice little trick I learned when I was in college. I'm putting in panel pins, veneer pins. No, they're panel pins, they're not veneer pins. I'm putting panel pins into a piece of flooring, but I don't want them to show. I don't have a drill bit small enough to suit a pin, so what you do is you cut the head off, chop it off completely, put the pin in your drill, and drill all and every hole that you need.
Okay, with that hole, I can now bash my pin in. And I've got my fixing. Apologies for not showing you the work in progress of the landing banister, but my battery ran out. And what did I do? I forgot to bring my lead. I oh, know, I'm a donor. But anyway, here's the finished product. As I said, there's the finished floor section. And I've just raised the nosing. You can see where the nosing was, where it now is finished flush with the new floor so now the carpenter just has to finish off the job and I'm off to my next one lovely